Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. Welcome to my home. This is the Fireside Chat. That's the Fireside. I'm the chat, and that's Otto. Otto is now, as I've told you, I think America's most uh, famous dog. In fact, he has international fame, uh, and it cracks me up how many people at airports come over and either just say, give my regards to Otto, or, or will end their uh, selfie with me with some comment about him. It, uh, the guy's doing well. You doing well, Otto? You're the man. You are definitely the man. Uh, in case you had a hard day, uh, Otto is going to is going to help you calm down. It is it is an amazing thing, actually, the power of dogs. I admit it. I'm I'm not a fanatic on on the pets, but I am realistic. They do they do give a lot to people. What do they say that the elderly uh, live longer and more healthful if they if they are alone? In other words, they don't have a spouse companion. Uh, family uh, with them all the time if they have a dog with them all the time. And I, I understand that. It's, it's so, it seems, it does seem sort of like God made dogs for people and made us for the dogs. I have to admit, it is a two-way street. What would they do without us? So it's, uh, it's a very touching thing. Anyway, great to be with you. This is a chance uh, for your us to talk and to be honest, obviously, to know me better because none of this is scripted. It's what's on my mind. I share it with you and I hope you share these videos with others. We have a lot of viewers and that is very important to me because I think important things are said here. So basically, I always, I think always, I begin with something that is on my mind. In other words, not something that is told to me, you know what you should talk about, unless it's really something already I'm, I've been thinking about. But in this case, this is, this is sort of haunting me. The, uh, the notion uh, that, uh, that, for example, uh, men can menstruate. This is now a, uh, this is now a given uh, on the left in America. And, and not just America, in, in the English-speaking world. I don't believe, this is a very, thing, very interesting thing that I don't believe I have an explanation for. And I, it drives me a little crazy when I can't figure out a why. Why are the English-speaking countries weirder uh, in their, quote-unquote, political correctness, which means ability to believe what isn't true, than, than let's say, Germany or France or... Or, or any African country or any Asian country. If you told a, a Vietnamese, a, an intellectual a, a, or a peasant, doesn't matter, any a, a Vietnamese person, you know, uh, men can menstruate, they would think you're out of your mind and they'd be right. That's, that's the amazing thing. I don't doubt that there are people who feel that they are men and menstruate because they are biologically women. I, that's a fact. I don't deny facts, but it is also a fact that it is biologically a woman. And I'm not going to say the man is menstruating. A person who identifies as a man is menstruating. I have no, I, I, I understand that, but that's not the same as a man can menstruate. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's so remarkable because if you have any hesitation about converting the world to solar and uh, and uh, um, not, not windmills and uh, and wind, solar and wind. If if you have any hesitation, you don't even doubt that the world is getting warmer. But you have any hesitation about undoing the entire Western world's economy uh, because of the alleged existential threat of global warming. And existential means threat to one's existence. That I don't believe. I believe the world's getting warmer. I do not believe it's an existential threat. That is true. I do not believe that. But if you have any hesitation on that, on the solutions, oh, you're anti-science. But if you say a man menstruates, you're pro-science. See, this is, this is the, the upside-down universe that young people are inheriting from their elders. Never have, have, uh, has a young generation been more misled on almost every issue than is currently happening in the West, uh, and especially in uh, English-speaking countries. And I will give you a list of some of the terrible things. I just wrote this in my column. I write a column every Tuesday, and I hope you'll 
you'll read them because I, I, I work these things out in print and that's a very important way to develop clear thinking is, is by writing so you'll see it. But this is, this is a, an amazing example. So the man behind the camera today, Tyler at, from PragerU, he's new with us. Uh, he went through the hazing process. He's, he's currently recuperating. And uh, he said he was just at Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley. And in the men's room, there were tampons. And this is all to be woke. This is not real life. I, I would love to know how many tampons are used in the men's room in the course of a semester at Berkeley. I mean used, not thrown in the garbage uh, by guys who think this is ridiculous. And it, and it is, it just, it, it, it's, it, it is ridiculous. It is not ridiculous that there are people with gender dysphoria. It's just sad, but it's extremely rare. And you don't, if, you, if the movement said, treat transgender people with respect, I would be on board. You treat human beings with respect. But I'm not prepared to abolish the, the fact of male-female distinction. There aren't 57 genders. There are two. Anyway, the word sex was transformed by the left to gender. It's so interesting. You will never see the word gender to describe humans. Uh, from 50 years or beyond. It was always sex. If you look on birth certificates, it doesn't say gender, it says sex. Men can menstruate. That's what people should ask. If you want to figure out if your relative has uh, been brainwashed or thinks, just say, can a man menstruate? If they start, I mean, it's a yes or no answer. Can a man menstruate is a yes or no answer. Now, if they say, well, no, a man cannot menstruate. But there are women who identify as men, biological women identify as men, and they will continue menstruating. Okay, that's a fact. I understand that. But it doesn't mean men menstruate. I care about the truth because uh, I, I wrote years ago, 25 years ago, I wrote a piece for UCLA magazine, not for, not for a conservative source, tr that lies were the beginning of all evil that truth protects us from evil. And uh, we, we are bathing in untruths, bathing in them. That, uh, listen, I, I think that one of the biggest lies of all is America is a racist country. It's just a lie. It's, it's, a, it's one of the biggest lies in history. There are racists in America, but America is not a, a racist country. I'll tell you as a Jew, there are anti-Semites in America, but America is not an anti-Semitic country. That's a lie. That there are anti-Semites in America is true. That America is an anti-Semitic country is a lie. How are you doing, little fella? Normally, he doesn't snore this loud, I have to say. But uh, I'm boring him on, a, on, a, on an exceedingly deep level. He's in a real REM sleep at this time. Otto, you ever crack me up? <laughs> It's, it's hard to concentrate, I have to say, <laughs> when this guy is snoring away, you know, three feet from me. But it, it's fun that, you know, life, you got to laugh, folks, or, uh, the, the, you know, the opportunities to cry are legion. So it's very important to laugh. I'm going to give you a whole list of, I made up a list. See, see my column on the internet at town hall uh, or at uh, It's it's, uh, it, it's in many places. Uh, the, uh, where, where is it? The... Um, what was it? Uh, American Greatness. Yes, American Greatness also takes it. And uh, the, the uh, Jewish World Review. It, it's a, a lot of places take it. National Review. So, uh, but I'd like you to see it every Tuesday it comes out. Or you just sign up and we'll send it to you at DennisPrager.com. But here it is. Uh, what the left tells young Americans. Listen, listen to this. So I told you this already at a, a previous... A fireside chat. Your past is terrible and your future is terrible. Has any American generation ever said that to the young generation? Never. They told them their past was noble with flaws. Nobody ever denied the flaws. No one. I, I did, you think I didn't learn about slavery or Jim Crow? Of course. Or for that matter, terrible things that were done to the Indians. All of this was known. But this, that was the norm in human life. 
Every society in history uprooted the previous society. Every society in history had slavery. So that's not what renders America unique. What has rendered America unique is its goodness, not its badness. And that it killed itself literally to get rid of slavery, called the Civil War. The first generation means that your past is terrible and your future is terrible. You'll die. Don't even have kids. Don't get married because of this existential threat. Just want to remind you, when I was a kid, there was also an existential threat. Nobody talks about this. Starvation. We were told, read, read about Paul Ehrlich at Stanford. The world is going to starve because there are so many people, too many people. There won't be enough food. There's more food than ever, and there are more people than ever. Fewer people are starving now than at any time in the history of the world. But they didn't tell them their future was terrible. Your future is bright. What a loathsome elder generation to tell young people your future is terrible. These adults make me sick. Don't believe it. Your future is terrible if you believe these people. Next, if you're a girl, you should know that American society has contempt for you. You will be paid less than a man for the exact same work and same exact number of hours of work. It's not true. It's been debunked over and over. We have a video by a female scholar showing what nonsense it is that women, uh, for the exact same work, exact same number of hours, get paid less. It just isn't true. It isn't true. Get it? If it were true, I would acknowledge it's true and we have to do something about it. But it isn't true. And what else are young women told? You will have between a one in four and one in three chance of being sexually assaulted if you attend college. Now, I know that the people who say that know that they're lying because they send their daughters to college. Would you? Would you send your daughter to a place where she had a one in three or one in four chance of being raped or otherwise sexually assaulted? Of course not. They make these things up. They're made up of whole cloth. Would you send your, if you did, you're a pretty awful parent. Okay, I, I'm not, I'm not hyper vigilant, but if I had a daughter, I wouldn't send her to a place where she had a one in three. USC, they say, is a one in three chance of sexual assault. Really? And, and, and people are bribing people to get their daughters into USC. Hey, honey, gotta, you got to get to USC. You got a one in three chance of being sexually assaulted. Oh, ma, that sounds, that sounds awesome. I mean, we, we live in a make-believe world. Do you understand? It's all make-believe. No wonder there's so many angry young women. Look at what they're told. Society is misogynist. Society is patriarchal. It hates you. You won't get paid right. You're going to be sexually assaulted. This is astonishing. Oh, there's a glass ceiling that will prevent you from professional success. And, of course, the biggest lie of all, professional success, not marriage and family, is what you should be concentrating on. God. It's, it's mind-blowing. Mind Sorry, young women. You should be the happiest women in the history of womanhood. Womanhood. Femaleness. For living in a country like America. Not just America. In so many of these countries. Free and equal. What, what's the next thing that young people are being told? Oh, yes. By the way, you understand, what's the agenda? The unhappy hate the happy as a general rule. Not always. The left are un not liberals every time I say it. Liberals and conservatives have much more in common than either has with the left. I have a whole video on the differences between left and liberal. Five minutes is all you need at PragerU. I have a video giving you six examples of the differences between left and liberal. There are happy liberals and unhappy liberals. There are happy conservatives and unhappy conservatives, but all leftists are unhappy, and they want to make you, young people, unhappy. And they're succeeding in too many cases. Young black. Oh, if you're a young black, oh my God. Oh, most important thing for you to know is that America loathes you. Racism is in America's DNA, President Obama 
Isn't that amazing? Racism is in America's DNA, but a black president said it. <laughs> I guess the DNA wasn't working for that election. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. And that just being black gets you suspended or expelled from school. Just being black. Shot by police. Denied the vote. That's the, the denial of the vote. Is Every democracy has a voter ID. You need an ID to, to, to board an airplane, to get into a hotel room. Why isn't that uh, anti-black? Why is voter ID for elections racist, but voter ID to go into a hotel, that's not, a, that's not racist. There is no answer to the question that I just posed because it's all made up. But it gets young blacks angry. And an angry young black, guess how an angry young black votes? And guess how a happy young black votes? Okay, my case is rested on that one. All right, next, if you're a young Latino, know that the white majority is so xenophobic, if they could, whites would expel you from the country. It's really amazing, given that half the Latinos marry whites. So would all those whites marrying Latinos in America want their spouse expelled? <laughs> they just make things up. But if, again, an angry Latino... It's another vote for the Democrats. Next, if you're a white male, oh, ho, 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 this is a young white males. You are the recipient of unearned privilege. Yes, and you're a racist. There you go. That's, that's a beautiful message to young white males. Boys and girls, you need to know that from as young an age as possible, there is actually no such thing as boys and girls. That's why your teachers have been told not to refer to you as boys and girls, but only as students, lest we divide between boys and girls. We would never want to do that. Do you know how to deprive kids of the joy and the tension? Yes, there's tension. And who, what, if I'm a girl, what is a boy like? What are, what are the boys? What are they like? But it's so exciting. And if you're a boy, what is a girl like? And it's so exciting. But we're all nothing we're all what we'll choose. What a message. And of course, young people, you should know there is no God. So don't look to God or religion for meaning. They're for the emotionally handicapped and intellectual lightweights. For meaning, look to social action. That's what the left, the leftism is a substitute. With the death of Christianity in the West, you've got all these secular left religions. Marxism, humanism, socialism, communism, environmentalism, feminism, all the isms. They're religions. They're substitute religions. Okay. Anyway, there's a lot more, but uh, take a look at the article that I wrote. It's time for your questions. Where is there? Oh, look at that. Okay, here we go. First, the, what do we call it? The video question? All right, here we go. Take it away. Video question number one. I'm Maria, 53, from Hi. Los Angeles. So I want to know that when your calendar frees up and you suddenly have all this time, what is it that you want to go ahead and do? Well, it's a good question. What is it I want to do or what is it I will do? <laughs> what is it I want to do? Want and will are not the same in life. Uh, so what is it? First of all, if my calendar frees up, which is very rare, I, I'm on the road constantly. Uh, it, 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 would, it would be uh, amazing for you to see it. I'm very, uh, and, and I, don't, I never complain because I know it's an honor for me to be going from place to place and offering my ideas. I never take it for granted. I'm a very lucky man. But if it freed up, first of all, uh, the first, the first, I, I know this is going to sound really corny. The first thing I want to do if my calendar frees up is be with my wife. So uh, I, I, I really, I'm, it's, look, it's not my first marriage. So, uh, you know, I'm not holier than anybody listening, but it's a very happy marriage that I'm in, thank God, at this time. Been together for 15 years. And uh, I really do. Uh, I have a theory that it's more important to like people than to love them. There are people who love their kids, but they don't like them. 
Almost every parent loves their kid. Like is a, ve- it's, it's by the way, very few languages have the word like. English has more words than any other language. And it's a great advantage because you could be more precise given the number of words that English has. Like is a great one. Love is powerful and beautiful, but like works, uh, it works its magic more so even. And uh, anyway, I love her and I like her. So, but, but this, this is the like, I just, so we would, we'd go out for, for lunch. I don't tend to eat the dinner. I, I tend to fast from about 5 p.m. to noon the next day, almost every day. By the way, it's not heroic. It's just the way I like to eat. I like it. I think it's healthy. I, uh, I love having an empty stomach. And it's something, you, if you can do it, not everybody can do it. They get headaches and so on. Don't do it if you get a headache. But if you can try it, it's, it's, uh, it's something, uh, it, it makes life very easy. <laughs> just you have this window of eating and then it's over. There's no diet like not eating. You don't have to think of calories. You don't have to think of carbohydrates. You're just not eating. It's a pleasure. I do have coffee and cream, by the way. That I admit. I, I want to make that clear. That, that I'm allowed, according to the doctor that I interviewed on the radio uh, who wrote this book. He's is, is in Toronto. I think his name is uh, Wang or Wing. Uh, I, I don't recall exactly. But anyway, uh, that's one of the first things that I would do if my calendar clears up. Uh, I would, uh, but the truth is, if my calendar clears up, I'm then going to be doing writing. I'm writing the third volume of my Bible commentary. And that's a very, very uh, tough thing. It's, it's, it's the toughest project of my life and the most rewarding. And if you haven't read it, if you want to know why it is the wisest book ever written, I think my, my books, The Rational Bible, will explain it to you. And they, they are guides to how to live. I've done Genesis and Exodus, and now I'm working on the fifth of the five books, Deuteronomy. And uh, so, anyway, I, I enjoy life, or I would think of having a cigar, but I have a cigar anyway. Even my, even if, well, I can't smoke on the road. It's much harder. Although in almost every city I go to, I go to a cigar lounge. And I know how to take care of myself so I don't burn out. My Sabbath is my secret weapon, a day of the week when I tune out completely and I'm just with friends and or family. That is, uh, I ought to talk to you about that. You know what? I should talk about the Sabbath one, uh, one of these times. It's an incredible invention. It's why it's the only ritual in the Ten Commandments. God knew what he was doing. All right. Well, that was a long one. What are we doing on time? 23. Oh, all right. Okay, Michael, 16, Wittensville, Massachusetts. Shalom, Mr. Prager, Mrs. Prager, Otto, Snoopy, and the staff behind the camera. Wow, that's very sweet. As an observant Jew, I was recently asked the question, would you defile the Sabbath in order to save a human life? I said, I believe God would want me to defile the Sabbath in order to save a human. Your thoughts, God bless. Well, it's not even a question in Jewish law. You're not allowed to violate the Sabbath to save a life. You are obligated to do so. God will think you're an idiot if you didn't violate the Sabbath to save a life. And you don't want to be thought of as an idiot by God. You don't want to be thought of as an idiot by anybody, generally speaking. But God is a a good judge. No, that's the law. You must violate the Sabbath. To save a human, human life comes first. That's the law. (coughs) That's very important that you know that. And you, you, you are obligated. By the way, among other reasons, aside from the fact that human life comes before any ritual, there's another reason. Because it would make Judaism and God look terrible. And that's a terrible sin to make your religion look bad. When people slaughter in the name of Islam, what does it do to the name of Islam? Makes it sound terrible religion, right? If it it, it became known this guy didn't, didn't save a life because he wouldn't violate the Sabbath, what would it say about the Sabbath, God, and Judaism? It'd say that they're stupid religion, correct? So it's not even a question. Okay. 
Hannah, 33, London, UK. Dear Dennis, I am 33 and have been married to my husband for four years. We are considering adoption. Do you have any advice to share about how to make an adoptive family work? I would be interested to know your thoughts. Best wishes. Yes, I have thoughts since one of my children is adopted, adopted at birth. And it's a very simple thought. There is no difference. Therefore, do the exact same thing with an adopted child as with a biological child. I see no difference between blood and not blood. That's always been my position. I, I, don't, I don't want to transmit my seed to my children. I want, to, I want to give my values to my children. That's what matters to me. And ask any parent with biological and, and adopted, ch- adopted children. The love is the same. The child is the, your child is your child. If, if, if you learned, if, if, if you, you, well, not you, but uh, if, uh, let's see, if, I'm trying to think of an analogy here. If, if you, if it were found out, it's, if you were a parent, and let's say, here, how's this? Let us say it was found out through DNA analysis, right? You did a, you did a DNA test. And it was found out, your parents found out that, uh, in fact, you, uh, you were adopted. Uh, would they love you less? That you were not, uh, you were not, by, the, the, not adopted. The, the, the hospital made a mistake. They gave the wrong baby to them. So you're now 33. You think your parents would love you less? I mean, think about it. it, it it's, it's a non-issue. Good luck. It doesn't matter. Love is love. How's he doing? All right. What's our timing? 27. Steve, 35, Plano, Texas. I spoke in Plano, Texas. Considering that leftism is a religion, how can someone be both a good leftist and a good Christian? Well, you could be a good liberal and a good Christian, a good conservative and a good Christian, but you can't be a good leftist and a good, and a good Christian. That's correct. They're competing religions. They share almost nothing. That's correct. Now, there are people who think that they are good Christians and are leftist. I understand that. There are people who think a lot of things. Uh, but uh, if, one, if one truly understands if, uh, what, uh, what leftism stands for, uh, and, and then what, uh, I mean, do you think Christianity actually believes that there are more than two sexes? Or more than two genders? What's the biblical basis for that one? Uh, the Judeo-Christian uh, value system believes that there, there are objective uh, good, good and evil. It's not, it's not a matter of opinion. That there is a God from whom good and evil uh, emanate. It's believe in the Ten Commandments. Well, there were leftists who believe in the Ten Commandments. That's fair. I, I, would, I would imagine so. But uh, 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 I don't know how you could be a good Christian and say capitalism is evil. Okay? I don't understand that. A good Christian wants to lift people from poverty. Only capitalism has lifted people from poverty. So how could you be a Christian who cares about the poor and you don't care about lifting the poor from poverty? That's the definition of anti-capitalist, one who, one who does not believe in lifting the poor from poverty. You believe in equality, but that is not lifting people from poverty. Don't ever confuse equality with lifting people from poverty. They have nothing to do with one another. There are fewer poorer people today. Why are, there so, why, why are, so, why are the Chinese living so much better than 50 years ago? Chinese was, was synonymous with, with impoverished and starving. Not anymore. Solely thanks to capitalism. Solely. Yes, it's a communist regime in terms of liberty. There's no liberty in, uh, or very little liberty in China. That is correct. But, but uh, there is capitalism. By the way, it's very interesting. I am now reading this brand new, very long biography of Hitler. And... Uh, it's a professor at the University of London, I believe. And it, it is eye-opening 
how much Hitler hated capitalism. Hated it. He thought the Jews were, were the world's capitalists. That's how much he hated capitalism, because of course he hated Jews. Jews were capitalists. So uh, I, maybe I should write, I'll, I'll write up an essay on the differences between leftism and, and Judeo-Christian values. That would be very helpful to people. I, I mean, I'll give you an example. The Pope, the Pope is a leftist. I say this with sadness because I have so many Catholic friends and supporters. But he's a leftist, and uh, it's terribly affected uh, his uh, Catholicism. He was asked the week or, or, or within a week of the French priest whose throat was slit while saying mass by, by an Islamic terrorist, within a week on the papal airplane by a Catholic, one of the representatives of the Catholic news agency in France, Holy Father, why don't you condemn Islamic terror? And his answer, I have the exact words in a column of mine, so you could look it up. I'm paraphrasing. His answer was, well, hey, I don't condemn every Catholic in Italy who kills his girlfriend. That's how a leftist thinks. That there's no difference between a guy born Catholic who's killed his girlfriend and a guy in the name of Islam who slaughters non-Muslims. Are the guys killing their girlfriends in, in Italy, those who are doing it, are they doing it in the name of Christ? If they did, then there would be an analogy, but there's no analogy. And he is, he is uh, very opposed to capitalism, and, and, which is, makes sense. He comes from Latin America where the, uh, the concept of liberation theology, which is left, leftism with, uh, with Christ attached, uh, is very strong. Listen, my job is to try to offer you clarity. Agree with me or not, but we have to be clear on our suppositions at least. Well, that's about time for today. It goes pretty fast, actually. The trick is, does it go fast for you? If it goes fast for me, that's a good sign. But if it goes fast for you, that's the important sign. That's why I do these, uh, these weekly broadcasts. The world is uh, really confused. The world is, 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 the human being is a very complex species. Uh, species. By the way, I'll give you one more example on the differences. Judeo-Christian or Christian uh, values are that the, one of the basic beliefs is that people are not basically good. Uh, leftists believe that people are basically good. That's why they believe that reason alone is enough. You don't, you don't need God to do what is good. Just because you're basically good, all you need is your conscience and your reason. The last question I asked at Berkeley when I debated two left-wing students, you could watch it on YouTube. I knew I'd be heckled, so I decided I'll have two leftists on stage with me, and then I won't get heckled, and I was right. And uh, so my last question to them, I just wanted to clarify how we differed. I said, do you believe people are basically good? And they both said yes. And I knew they'd say yes, because they're on the left. Leftism is rooted in naivete. I have to say that I can't think of a more foolish position than that people are basically good. Your ignorance of human history has to be almost total to believe that the human being is essentially good. We can be good. That's true. There are good people but it takes an effort. It's like saying we're basically all pianists. No, we're not. You have to learn to play piano. It's in just about everyone to be able to play piano. It's within you, but it has to be brought out. And it isn't easy to play the piano well, and it isn't easy to play life well. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I'm Dennis Prager. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep these fireside chats free, please do by donating to PragerU.